today we ask the question, is Ireland a fully functional democracy? And why isn't it? Well, to most people, uh, a functioning democracy entails you having elections, regular intervals. It also entails the rule of law, and that especially applies to the, the government of the day, who are expected not only to make laws, but to adhere to those laws themselves. There's also the expectation by most people, if not all, that in a fully functional democracy, a government of the people, by the people, for the people, all that stuff, basically does the will of those people, acts on behalf of those people and seeks to put forward and push forward the agenda that the majority of those people want. The go in the direction that most people want, enact policies that most people want. That's what everybody, at least most right-thinking people, would assume is the definition, the basic definition of a functional democracy. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that here in Ireland today, we do not meet those criteria. And as far as I am concerned, we do not live in a functional, a fully functional democracy. We just don't. But well, one issue has blown the lid off this fallacy that we live in a functional democracy. It's the issue that most people have at the top of their list of concerns. Take a look at this graph. The issue that concerns most Irish citizens as of right now, as of this year, as of last year, in all the polls is immigration. Yes, that's the topic on everyone's lips. That's the issue that concerns most ordinary Irish people. So let's have a look at what they think about immigration. Now, it's fair to say Ireland, as opposed to even Britain and France, Germany, compared to the size of our tiny population, which is barely 5.2, 5.3 million, at least that's the official figures. The numbers coming in in the last few years have been utterly staggering, outrageous. Numbers on a scale not seen in history outside of invasion. Let's just say this is not an issue the government can sweep under the rug. It has manifested itself in all kinds of negative ways just on the general Irish society, just on the everyday lives of ordinary people. What I'm specifically talking about is doctors. You can't get a doctor now. You can't even join a doctor's surgery now. There aren't enough doctors. If you have a, an illness that requires hospital treatment, you, you can't get an appointment. You can't get hospital treatment. There simply aren't enough hospital spaces, beds, or even hospital places for operations, etc. Schools. You can't enrol your children in schools now because there simply aren't enough school places now. People are having to go way outside their own area just to get their child into, into a school. And maybe the biggest issue of all, accommodation. We are in the midst of a catastrophic housing crisis here in Ireland. There simply is not enough accommodation for the local population, the native population, and this massive influx of new people, immigrants, both legal and illegal. There simply isn't enough places for them to live. And figures just released yesterday have shown, as if to put the icing on the cake, that we are building new homes, new houses, new accommodation at a quarter of the rate that they are needed, at a quarter of the rate of the new arrivals of people who need those units. A quarter, 25%. Immigration, the demand for housing now is four times the supply. It's absolutely crazy. And that's why in all the polls for the last few years, there has been an overwhelming cry from the general public to cap 
immigration, to stop immigration, to control immigration, to slow down immigration. Over three quarters of the population desperately want the government to do this and to enact policies to make this happen. But they point blank refuse to change course. The freely expressed wish of over 70% of the Irish population is being willfully ignored by the government of the day. And if you think that's not bad enough, and bad it is, all the major opposition parties in Parliament are also set to continue to ignore these people, to ignore the wishes of these people. So not only have you got the government in power, which is trampling on the wishes of the people, you have all the opposition parties also willing to trample on the wishes of the majority of the people. Now I ask you this, how is that by any stretch of the imagination a properly functioning democracy? You can vote for any of the main political parties and you get the same result. You get the same dereliction of duty. You get the same ignoring of the will of the people. That isn't democracy. That is tyranny. North Korea has elections, but they always end up with Kim Jong-un. The German Democratic Republic, East Germany, they had elections, but you always ended up with the communist East Germans. The Soviet Union, well, they had elections too. You could vote for anybody you liked. They had an array of candidates, men, women, of all ages, but they were all members of the Communist Party. So you always ended up with a communist government. They all had elections. The elections were designed so that nothing could change. The elections were designed not so that the will of the people could be enacted, could be listened to and could be acted upon, no, the elections were designed so that nothing could change. So that the ruling elite stayed the ruling elite. So that the policies that the ruling elite wanted became the policies ad infinitum. The will of the people simply didn't matter. But allowing them to go to the polls occasionally seemed to be good for morale. So let them go to the polls just as long as nothing can actually change. As Joseph Stalin once famously quipped, doesn't matter who votes, it matters who counts the votes. This is a facade. This is little more than theatre. It's performative art. We go to the polls, we put a little X on the boxes, we put it into the box, it all looks great and everybody smiles and nods at each other and thinks, isn't this marvellous? We live in a fair and free democratic society. No, we don't. No, because it doesn't matter where you put the X. The result is always the same. Nothing changes. The will of the people is very, very clear. We know it. They know it. Everybody knows it. The polls show it. It's not a secret. It didn't just happen yesterday. It didn't just pop up out of the ether. But deals have been done in back rooms. Parties have been had, but you and I, we weren't invited. We don't get invited to those parties because we're just the plebs. We don't count. Our opinions, no matter whether it's the majority, no matter whether it's the vast majority, if it doesn't chime in sync with the ruling elites, then it doesn't count. They simply don't care. They're going to do whatever they're going to do and you just got to play along. And if you don't like it, they'll use the force of the law to come down on you like a ton of bricks. They'll smear you as an agitator. They'll smear you as far right. They'll smear you as being fringe. They'll smear you as being a bad person. Well, I choose not to play. I choose not to go along. I choose to use this small platform to call this bullshit out because bullshit it most definitely is. Ireland, as far as I'm concerned, is not 
a fully functional democracy. I make no bones about saying it because it's the truth. I can vote for anybody I like and I don't get what I and the vast majority of my countrymen and women want. We don't get it because they don't care. They're not interested in the people that vote for them. They care about themselves, their own careers, their paymasters, the EU, the UN, the globalists. It's what they want that matters. It's what they want that gets implemented. You and I, we're just worker ants. Our function, as far as they're concerned, is to just work, consume, and then die in a timely fashion all to be replaced by other worker ants, possibly from other places. They don't care. To them, it's just a big anthill. Well, I say no. Ireland is a sham democracy. Ireland is a fake democracy. We started off from humble beginnings. Our ancestors, who led often short and brutal lives, carved this country out of rock, out of granite, in the hopes that it would lead to better things, better lives, better conditions. And look where it's led us. We are now a banana republic. Enjoy your stay.